So if any of you have watched me for a while, you'll know that I love dragons. They're my favorite creature of all time, and one of my favorite stories featuring these great beasts is the How to Train Your Dragon film series. Mainly because the movie is able to take a tired out concept and make it new with some very impressive dragon designs. Seriously, the How to Train Your Dragon dragons are some of the most unique I've ever seen. So of course, the second I saw this... Shut up and take my money! But I knew that this was based off of a long series of children's books, and a year ago, I read the original tale. And it was like stepping into a bizarre world. The book and the movie hardly have any connection to each other. I could spend an entire video alone showcasing how much was changed, but these are the most obvious. The Vikings don't fight dragons, but capture them to train. What? Hiccup is still the loser nerd but not the contraption maker we know. What? Still with the vast is more of a buffoon, and Astra doesn't exist. What? And the final nail in the coffin! Toothless isn't a rare adorable night fury, but a tiny common green who's a total jackass. What? Oh, and the dragons can talk. Yeah, that's pretty much most people's reaction. Like I said, bizarro world. But still, when you get past what's so different, How to Train Your Dragon, the book, was still pretty good, but obviously meant for children. Still, I was curious how the series was going to progress and what direction it would go. And knowing now not to compare it to the films, I can look at this book on its own. So... Ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, people of all ages, my name is David Popovich, aka The Bookworm, and welcome to Bookworm Reviews. Sit back and relax as we dive into the second How to Train Your Dragon book, How to Be a Pirate, by Cassandra Cowell. <laughs> So the books themselves are designed as memoirs of Hiccup Honodonis Haddock III of his journey to becoming a great hero. Hiccup is, in fact, the hero of this story, although you would never have guessed this to look at him. He was on the small side and had the sort of face that was almost entirely unmemorable. Taking the concept of how a hero can come from anywhere, any size, any shape, etc, etc. A good message for children, which is also why Toothless isn't that rare Night Fury. It's to tie back that even the most common, unremarkable bees can do wondrous things. Even when they are a total jackass. These Vikings crazy. Toothless got salt in his wing. Toothless sitting in a cold huddle. Toothless hungry. Feed me. He tugged at Hiccup's pants. Toothless need food. Now. Shut up. At first, I was completely against this guy, but now, I kind of like this Toothless and the guys you love to hate, though he does pull his weight when needed. Anyway, after showing he can train a dragon, Hiccup and his classmates are now learning the next step to becoming heroes. Pirate. Get it? But even after showing how useful he is, boys are extremely fickle, and he's back to being the village nerd. But during a lesson on sea, they encounter something. The coffin of Grimbeard the Ghastly, the greatest pirate that ever lived, and Hiccup's ancestor. They open the coffin, even though it states to not be opened, and discover a man named Alvin the Poor But Honest Farmer. And this is what he looks like! Oh yeah, you can totally tell that he's nothing but honest. Don't! Just... Just don't. He's been searching for the lost treasure of Grimbeard the Ghastly, 
but got trapped in one of his coffins. With the hooligans being ancestors to Grimbeard, Alvin hopes they can discover the treasure that's on an island filled with man-eating dragons. Cause you can totally trust this guy. Honest is in his name. I'll do it, he yelled. Fellow hooligans, he bellowed. I shall lead you on a quest to find the treasure of our ancestors. But it's insane, cried Hiccup. Anyone who sets one toe on that island will be eaten alive in moments. I don't see the problem. It's suicide to even think of it. Everyone was cheering too hard to listen to Hiccup. And that's the general tale. They go to an island, have an adventure, learn the shocking revelation of Alvin, and Hiccup learns more important lessons to becoming the hero the books are building him up as. Add also a lesson about greed, and you get a very cut and dry adventure story. There's no way to get around this, but the best way to describe this book, even though it will sound so negative, is childish. Which, duh, it's a children's book. The best time to read these books are when you are a child reading them for the first time. As an adult, odds are they'll see it as a downgrade, if not completely dismiss them when compared to the, um... So sophisticated adaption? You can see what the books are about, but the book's focus is children first. But how does the book stand on its own as a sequel? I say it's fair. There are many good moments within the book, mainly being Snotlot. In the movie, they drop a lot of what his character is, but in the book, he's Hiccup's rival to become chief of the village. Snotlot can do everything that Hiccup can't, and on several occasions, tries to get Hiccup killed. Really? So when they learn that only the true heir to the tribe can find the lost treasure, it puts pressure on Hiccup if he can truly be the hero. Sure, he saved the village once, but what if that was just a fluke? He had to find the treasure. It was bad enough being the worst sword fighting trainee ever, but if he didn't find this treasure that the heir was supposed to find, then his father was going to be really disappointed. Hiccup hated disappointing his father, even though he had lots of practice at it. And what if Snotlot found the treasure? Hiccup went cold and clammy at the thought. But if there is one area that was lacking, it was the dragons. Sure, they are there, and Toothless does several things in the plot, but the dragons are placed in the background, as the book focuses more on treasure hunting, which, duh, but still. In the first book, we got introduced to several different dragon species, but here we only get one, the Scullions, which are pretty damn scary. If not from the island they live on, the black cliffs and their odd pillar-like formations and the bloody bright red earth seem to whisper the word, death. Then their appearance will. The scullion is a dragon standing about 10 feet tall. It has lost the power of flight, eyesight, and hearing. But its sense of smell is phenomenal and it will eat anything it comes across. Just look at that nightmare fuel! It's sad, cause for a guy who loves dragons, I wish to see more. But the other area that hurt the book was the reveal of Alvin being the leader of a group of pirates called the Outcasts. It's so obvious the second you see that face. How could anyone expect to be shocked when we've seen this plot play to death? He does get more interesting when all pretenses are dropped, but still Still, a mile away, man! A mile away! But even with all that, there's a charm with this book and the series in general. The theme is to be yourself, to go your own way. Don't conform to the standards of others when you'll be better at something else. And the book itself feels like that. Yeah, it's a story meant for children that is completely different if not a downgrade from the film. But who cares? It's doing its own thing by being silly and fun. And there's something delightful about that. It's giving kids a message that I'm 100% behind. It's examination of what greed can do to people. How it can turn family and friends blind to the real enemy. 
And to just make it even more enjoyable, it's filled with wonderful illustrations that, while not great, they look like they were drawn by a kid, again, but they fit within the goofy adventure tone of the story and WHAT IN THE HP LOVE CRAP IS THAT?! FOR THE LOVE OF ALL THAT IS HOLY, NEVER DRAW THAT AGAIN! I've said the best way to describe this book is childish. And while that may be true, it is also enjoyable. I don't think it's quite as good as the first one, but it's still a fun read that children will love. Adjust your expectations and enjoy a sweet, goofy, charming adventure. What about you, Internet? What's your opinion about how to be a pirate? Well, Viewer Suggestion Month draws to a close. Let me say thank you all for your suggestions. I apologize if I didn't get to any of the books you suggested. I planned these reviews months in advance to give myself time. Outside of a few outliers, I try to keep on schedule with what I plan. But don't worry, you guys have given me a whole list of books to look into the upcoming months. But there is still one more I have for you guys. It is my most requested review. It's the one that for many have introduced you to this silly little show. But it's not something that could be done in a month. Oh yeah! Goosebumps month is back, baby! Till next time! Have a nice day!